Hello crafty friends, welcome to another More Bang For Your Buck series. In our previous few videos we looked at getting the most out of a tag die. In this mini series we're going to be looking at getting the most out of the humble circle die. So I've got some cards here that I've made. A lot of them have videos, some of them don't, but these cards I've made using circles. So quite often I will use circles cut with circle dies as the foundation for a sentiment or a focal spot. Here we have two circles, one with colour on it, one without underneath our sentiment. Circles are brilliant for Christmas because you can make baubles out of them. You could even make Christmas puddings out of them. This was one I made recently for my top 15 ways to use backgrounds video. Here's another one where I've used a circle behind the sentiment for part of the focal point. This one I cut circles from a bit of coloured cardstock. I'd coloured I think with watercolour and painted on some leaves and added them there. I think this one might have been a circle punch rather than die but the principles are the same. Here's a watercolour cake that I painted and I cut the whole thing out with a large circle die, stitch circle die, and popped it on a card. Again, we've got a circle behind our sentiment here. For these two, the circles are very much the focal point themselves. So there's a cascade of circles that I've cut. I think I smushed a background, put a cover plate die cut over the top and then cut some circles. There's definitely a video for that. This one was from my washi tape video and I weaved some washi tape. Weaved or woved? Weaved. I don't know. Anyway, I've, I weaved some washi tape, covered it in packing tape and then die cut some circles. Here I die cut some white circles and layered on some leaves. This was from my pattern paper series and we used circles to cut out from our master board that we created with patterned papers so they're definitely the focal area image along with the gold and the sentiment another one with circles to create the focal point you can also use circle dies to create frames you can get circle frame dies as well i used a circle frame die to make this circle here but you could easily make that using straightforward circles same here this one i used lots of frames but you could make those frames with regular circle dies here's a stamped image that i watercolored i then cut it out with a circle and then added a circular frame on top this one has a circle with a sentiment on top of it so that makes a lovely focal point this one has a white circle frame and there's a circle of vellum behind the sentiment so you can cut your circles from any material white card colored card vellum foiled card and you can use circles to make some lovely apertures in your cards so here's a shaker card that i made I cut the aperture with a circle and then I made a circle frame to go over the top. This is similar to the one I showed earlier, but instead of cutting circles from the coloured cardstock, I cut the circles from the white cardstock and placed it over the coloured cardstock. So I've got a recess there. So I've got little apertures with coloured cardstock and butterflies in. This is one where I cut three apertures with three circle dies, created three frames, popped them on top, and then put something behind the apertures to make them really interesting. This is one made purely with white cardstock, and I cut an aperture in this and added a white frame around the edge. Similarly here, a circle aperture with a white frame. And this was one where I cut a partial circle out of a panel, popped the panel up on craft foam and then edged the circle with flowers. So they're raised up slightly. You might be able to see that there. Those are the things that I commonly do with circle dies. For this series, we're going to try maybe to push the envelope a little bit further and try some different things 
with circle dies so you can get more bang for your buck out of your basic circle dies. These are the circle dies that I'm going to be using for this mini series. We've got a plain set of circle dies and a stitched set of circle dies and I'll just pick the ones that I think will work best with the projects that we're going to look at. This is the card that I made last night in preparation for today's video and I used plain circle dies to create a rainbow. I think today I'm going to try it with stitched circle dies to give my rainbow a bit of texture. So I've got two sticky notes here. These are sticky across 80% of their backs so they're great for sticking dies to. And what I'm going to do is get my nesting stitched circle dies and try and line them up as best I can so there's an equal size gap between each circle. So I'm happy with that arrangement. What I'm going to do now is run this through my cuttle bug with some smooth white cardstock. And now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rings. And I'm going to place these on my grip mat so that I can ink them up individually. If you've got coloured cardstock that you want to use, you don't want to ink up your circles, you could just cut that from each colour of cardstock and then you would have uh, lots of circles in lots of colours and just choose the ones you want for your rainbow. For my colours I'm going for a pastel rainbow. We've got worn lipstick, dried marigold, scattered straw, cracked pistachio, tumbled glass, stormy sky and shaded lilac distress oxides. And so that I can uh, not accidentally blend on circles that I don't want to blend on, I'm going to use finger daubers, colour my circles. And I think it's the science teacher in me, but as a general rule, I like my rainbows to uh, be rainbows and start with red at the top and go down to violet at the bottom. Now I'm going to assemble my rainbow and I have used the large circle die, the one that cut the outside of the a red band and I've cut a piece of white paper with some double sided adhesive on it because I know that my circle, my red band will fit on there perfectly or as perfectly as I can get it to fit. We'll just work our way down the rainbow, getting everything stuck in nicely. So now we've got our circle of rainbow bands ready to rock and roll. And all I'm going to do is take my trimmer and chop it about halfway. It doesn't have to be exactly halfway. It can be wherever you want it, really. Just however you want your circles to arch. I've got this bit of sticky here which I don't want so all I'm going to do is take my scissors, you could use a craft knife, in fact I might do that, I think that might be a bit easier. Take a craft knife, a sharp craft knife, run it round underneath the violet circle so if you can just poke your craft knife underneath a bit then it won't cut your violet circle. So now you've got two rainbows. This one is slightly bigger than that one but I like this sort of how it, it starts to come in again at the bottom here. So that's our rainbow done and I really do like the stitched texture. I love this. I also love this. My card blank is approximately four by six inches and I've got a panel of smooth white cardstock here that is a little bit smaller all the way around to give it a nice border. 
My rainbow is going to go here roughly. I'll use my T-square ruler just to make sure my rainbow's straight and central and draw ever such a faint line even just pushing the pencil under the rainbow a bit because I just want to know where my rainbow is going to go. Now I've made it really wonky <laughs> because I knocked it. It doesn't matter. My rainbow is going to look like that. Now I'm going to go back to my circle dies and I'm going to pick the three smallest dies, I think. And I'm going to die cut some masks. So I've got my three circle dies and I've popped them on a sticky note because I'm going to use that as a mask. I've got two masks of each size and I'm going to pop them around my rainbow to make it look like there's some clouds behind it. I'm going to just round the corner of this one. And I'm going to pop this on my grip mat again because I'm going to do some more blending. I flipped my grip mat over because I've still got the ink from earlier on it and I don't want that to transfer to this so the bottom of my grip mat is clean and I'm using tumbled glass distress oxide which is what I used to ink the blue band and now I'm going to try and create a soft bluey sky catching my masks so that you can see the white of the clouds when I lift the masks. I'm not colouring the whole panel, I'm going to leave some areas white and because it's a cloudy sky I'm not looking for perfect ink blending, it can look cloudy. So we'll take these off see what it looks like we can always put the masks back on if we want to and pop our rainbow back on there and i'm really happy with that i think the clouds look like clouds and we've got enough blue on the sky it's most intense at the corners and sort of fades out towards the rainbow for my sentiment i'm going to use this thinking of you stamp and I'm going to stamp it in stays on black ink because this is a silicone stamp and that's the best black ink I have for silicone stamps. I don't have a die for this stamp so I'm going to use my detail scissors to cut it out by hand. When doing something like this I find it easiest to cut say my sentiment down to a really small piece and then do the cutting by hand. It just makes the uh, cuts more smooth I think or smoother. To neaten the edges a bit and to make it look as if it has been die cut I'll just roll around the edge with this embossing tool. I'm using the small end so I can get into all the uh, nooks and crannies and that makes it look like it's been die cut and just neats, neatens it up very well. Now we can assemble our card. I'm going to pop a little bit of glue on the back here, don't need much at all which is good because it's not coming out the bottle. And that can sit on a card blank with its little white border. I like that. To give my rainbow a bit of dimension, I've popped some foam tape on the back. And I'm going to line that up so it covers, covers the pencil marks that I made earlier. And now that's on nice and straight. I want to give my sentiment a bit of lift off of the rainbow. So I've cut some pieces of card 
and I'm going to pop them behind the sentiment. I don't want to give it too much lift. I don't want a whole nother layer of foam tape behind it, but a little bit of card behind it will just give it a little bit of separation. As a finishing touch, I'm going to add some Nouveau Crystal Drops in Morning Dew. These will dry clear. You can make them look like raindrops if you want to, but I'm just going to use mine in the round, as it were. I'm going to add them as circles. And as I say, these will dry clear. I'll show you how I do a raindrops. So I've just got this little bit of scrap paper here. And all I do is squeeze to make a circle. So squeeze it out, push it down a bit, but then drag it in one direction or another. And you should get a raindrop shape or a teardrop shape. So I'll do that again. Hold it vertically, squeeze, press down. And as you pull up, just drag it to the left or the right or up or down, whatever works for you. And there you have a raindrop. Right, that's today's More Bang For Your Buck Circle Edition video finished. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. Let me know which type of rainbow you prefer, the plain rainbow or the stitched rainbow. And if you'd like to see more from me, do subscribe, ring the notification bell, and I'll see you back here tomorrow for the next video in this series. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.